You'll recall that we've already soldered this electrolytic and this resistor in place, a 300 ohm. You know, later on, if I find out that's a little too big, I'll put a 250 in there. That'll make it a little bit closer to 263, which was the original requirement, but I don't think there's going to be any problem there. We know that the negative of this, these two capacitors here solders to the negative of this capacitor, and then it goes out to the speaker plug. And we know that they're both 8 microfarads. So, really, we can get rid of these. Just leave the stubs there so we, where we knew they were. We can just make a lot of room here. And just cut them babies out of there. Not needed any longer. And leaving our two stubs. We know what's supposed to happen. Positives here. Both and uh, to each one. And then, of course, the, the dual negatives here. Not a problem. Now we can go ahead and take out the screw from this uh, Bakelite block and work on getting the capacitors out of there. Now you can see we should be able to bend it right up and move it out just enough to where we can get to the bottom of it and work on it without disconnecting everything. Incidentally, this Bakelite block has a flexible resistor on it right here running from ground to the opposite end of the uh, capacitor and once again we have two wires coming from inside the block to ground and one wire to the center rivet coming out soldered and to the end rivet coming out soldered once again two capacitors inside this block I'm not sure you'll be able to hear this, so I'm going to put the camera down real close. Now listen. What I just did is pull the old Rick McWhorter 9 volt battery trick on the speaker for this uh, 630B. Now this 630 is, uh, boy, I'll tell you what, the speaker wires, they are in horrible, horrible shape. But, by connecting onto the primary of the audio output transformer using this battery trick that uh, Rick McWhorter just, just a few minutes ago, uploaded or, or, you know, made it public on YouTube, uh, it, it was perfect timing. His timing with my radio's uh, sometimes is, is impeccable. Uh, he'll, he'll do something. I'll say, geez, I was just getting ready to do that. I'm so glad you put up a video. So I just checked it out, and we. And I hope you could hear the sound. Uh, I'm getting good sound out of it, telling me that the field coil, the field coil, for those of you who don't know what a field coil is, <clears throat> the field coil is that big old giant coil right there. That's your field coil. And the audio output transformer is right here. The first thing I'm going to do is ohm out these three wires on the primary of the audio output transformer and the wire going to the field coil. I'm going to match them up by with using the multimeter. I'm going to ohm them out to the three pins on this connector. As you can see, one of them is not used right there. And the reason I want to ohm them out is I want to mark I mark them on the back one, two, three, and then I'm going to mark them up here one, two, three. So when it comes time to change these wires out, I'll, you know, if I'm if I'm not sure where I'm at, I can always just look at the numbers and make sure I'm okay. Also, another reason I want to do it is over here on this speaker plug. I want to uh, number the back of it also, and it'll make it easier for wire tracing uh, for these electrolytics and the rest of these wires. Also, in the future, it'll be a little easier for you know for someone else who might look there and say, oh, one. There is one here, is one here, without having to go through all the trouble maybe of following them out, ohming them out, or whatever. But first, what we're going to do is take a little alcohol, we're going to clean this mess up here. I've got my multimeter set up to the 200 ohm scale, 
and I'm going to take the black uh, alligator clip on the other end of this thing. I have it connected to the black lead on the multimeter. I'm going to stick it right there. And then we're going to take the red lead and we're going to stick it over here. Let me see if I can get some light on both of these subjects. We're going to find out which one of these will give us a reading from, from this point right here. Well, that's not it. Let's try this one. That's not it. There it is. Or is it? What's going on here? Got nothing. Well, yeah, maybe not. Let's try the bigger one. There she be. There it is. That we will label as number one. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little number one down there. Okay, and over here I'm going to put a number one also, right next to that pin. Just like that. Later on I'll write on the back side also, so you'll be able to tell either way just by looking at it. Alright, we know that's good. Now let's go ahead and take the other side of the primary of the audio output transformer. We don't have to go to this one anymore, so let's go to this one here. Nothing. Nothing. There it is. Okay. We now know that... Let me get this wire up here a little bit. We now know that this other lead from the audio output transformer corresponds to this one. So we're going to make this number two. Number two, I got it marked. I don't know if you can see that very well in the camera. And then over here, I'm going to mark this one as number two. Now, what that tells us is since we only have one wire left, which is this one right here, I'll go ahead and hook the black one there. Now, this one's one, this one's two. And this one right here doesn't even have a wire hook to it, so that leaves us with this one. So let's watch our multimeter now. There it is. Okay. That, my friends, we will labor, label as number three. This one and this one over here. Okay, I just labeled now the back of the plug, one, two, and three. Now I'm going to go over. I'm going to clean up the back of that plug a little bit right there, and I'm going to label that one, two, and three. This large uh, three watt resistor is reading low, way low, it's supposed to be 15k, it's like 9k. This one right here was supposed to have been changed to 10k. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, it's reading uh, 20k, it was supposed to have been changed to 10k, never was. So after I change this uh, capacitor, and these, this resistor and this resistor, and wire up the, the uh, electrolytics, will be pretty good to go. Except for uh, one thing I want you to see. Again, that Bakelite block right there consists of two capacitors, 0 .09s. And there's one of them right there. And the other one is way across the schematic to right here. So just because it's it, this one shows one capacitor, you know, you might think from what I told you last time, well, that's that's just a combination then, uh, uh, you know, in parallel. No way, that block has no parallel jumpers on it. No jumpers at all between the, the lugs. So that told me that each capacitor was being used separately for something else, and it was. One over here and one over here just so you know what you see here is that Bakelite block with aluminum foil wrapped around it I moved it around to where the bottom is is staring me straight in the face wrapped aluminum foil around it to protect all the components and associated wiring 
and I'm going to hit this baby with the heat gun. And once I get it all soft, then I'll just push it out from the uh, top side, just like I did the other one. The procedure will be exactly the same, except how I heated it to get it out. This video is getting a little longer than I want it, so in order to wrap it up, I think I'll just do a series of quick shots showing you what's been done. Right here, we have the second Bakelite block cleaned out. The twin .09 microfarad capacitors are in. The Bakelite block has been fastened back to the chassis and a terminal strip placed on top of it underneath the uh, head of the screw that holds the Bakelite block in. This is where I'll be mounting the electrolytics that go to the speaker plug. Well that's it folks we've got our two electrolytics in and the uh, 16 microfarad e cap in I used a 22 for it and instead of eights as I told you I used two 10 microfarads for the filter caps this here is a 15k 2 watt supposed to be a 3 watt unfortunately I thought I had a 3 watt and I don't I'm gonna have to put an order in for it but that this one right here will get me by to find out if the radio is working once I get the rest of it put together. I'll change it out later, but this one right here takes the place of this big old sucker. And this one going down here to that tube pin is the two water. They were some nasty stuff. I'm glad I got that out of there. And then of course this big old 16 microfarad cap was replaced with the 22 as I said. Now I chose to connect the filter caps to this terminal board, terminal strip. Uh, rather than connect them directly to the speaker plug pins. And, I, and there's a reason for that. I don't want the speaker plug pins to be soldered and unsoldered. I mean if these things go bad it means more desoldering from that speaker plug, those pins, and I'll tell you what, for some reason, speaker plug pins don't seem to last as well as tube. And, and, they're, and they're the same identical thing, actually. I don't know why it is they don't seem to last so well. But now if something goes wrong, they can just go ahead and remove it from the terminal strip. And if the terminal strip breaks, no problem. They can just get a million of these. But, you know, finding a, a speaker plug uh, socket is can be a real hassle so this will eliminate that and I also changed another wire down here that was pretty pretty messed up got rid of it and that was this this piece of junk right here so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through this entire radio wire by wire and I'm going to look at every single one of them and if I see any wires that I don't like if the insulation's bad if it's cracked, busted, I don't know what. You know, if it just doesn't meet my satisfaction when I see it, I'm going to change it out. Right now, they all look pretty good, but there may be two or three that I have to do. All we have left to do is change out. There's three wires in this little bundle. This is the shadow meter, the red and black wire to the shadow meter, and the brown wire is for the light to the shadow meter. And then this black wire you see right here, that someone has put in. They put in. Put. I don't know why they put it in. They really did a crappy job of soldering. And it's way too long. This is our dial light wire. So that's all I've got to do. Check things out. Run some new wires up through the chassis after it's painted. And one more thing I did. I ran new wires to the speaker plug. That's these babies right here. So we'll be putting that on the speaker here pretty soon. And uh, I didn't want to put them on right now because the speaker needs cleaning. Also, I want to paint this uh, uh, audio output transformer cover. And uh, the speaker itself needs to be cleaned really bad. It has a lot of cadmium yellow crap that needs to all come off. So I'll be working that over with navel jelly. going to be quite a chore there. you got to be real careful, real careful. 